Good morning. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Quick question. Anybody see the reminder on Facebook this morning or did it not get posted? You saw it? All right, great. I didn't check. Vincent told me he saw it, so I'm going with Vincent. There you go. <laughs> I don't think I have time to play any kind of trivia or script off. We only have a couple minutes before we launch. Um, Lorna and who else is joining us today for Paula? Patty Sutherland. There she is. Hi, Patty. Oh, you're muted. Good morning. Good morning. Patty, do I need to have up the PowerPoint or are you having it up to share? I, it's open right okay. now on my computer. I guess I would need to share the screen if I'm able. Yep, so when it's time, I'll tell you, share your screen. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, my apologies. I expected to be a little earlier, but I had an accepted offer this morning. So I'm like, wow. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's, all, it's always a good thing. Is that on the new condo? Hmm. Is that on the new condo? Um, actually, it's a buyer. So I, I had an accepted offer on Saturday and then accepted offer this morning. So love that. Yeah, it's a little busy, but it's all good. It's all good. We want to get to focus on financials. That's right. Financials. Financials. I just hope you all know you're listening, hearing from the best on this subject. So I'm very excited to have Patty present today. Well, thank you. I'm going to take good notes for myself as well. <laughs> now, how large of a class do we have? So I see 18. It will end up being around 100. 100. Oh, goodness. Yes. So Patty, I'll take care of chats and answering questions and just jump in and say, Patty, we have a question if we need to. Plus we always encourage people to unmute. Cool, excellent. That cute little face there. <laughs> that's, that's my daughter. She donated 12 inches of hair this weekend. It's a cute, cute haircut. Yeah. Let's see your haircut. That is very nice of you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. And you look beautiful. What do you say? <laughs> That's something to be proud of. Yeah. She's a, she's a good egg. I'll keep her. <laughs> she's like a mini me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's, my, my older daughter looks exactly like my husband. Um, and this one, he doesn't, I don't, I'm not sure. He doesn't look like he was involved because she's still like 100% me. <laughs> Things got confusing at NYU, right, Aaron? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So everybody, did you, we had an update on Zoom today. Were you forced to do an update on your Zoom account? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know if it will impact our start time at all, but. Hopefully people, um, if you weren't forced to do an update and you're jumping into other meetings later today, maybe plan a minute or two to update your Zoom account. <clears throat> All right, guys, it's nine o'clock. So uh, happy Monday morning. We are on the final stretch of this Ignite journey together. And we're, we're done on Wednesday, by the way. And here's, here's the crazy thing. Don't let this be done on Wednesday. These practices that you're learning throughout the last few weeks should really continue into your journey as you build your, your real estate career and business. And here's the other thing. Bold is coming in October. If you haven't heard about Bold yet, and this is not a commercial, this is not, they don't pay me to say any of this. I've taken Bold seven, I'm going on eight times. And I will continue to go to bold because here's the thing. Every time I'm in bold, my business gets focused, gets refocused. And I continue doing the practices that we teach here and in bold. Bold is the next step up from Ignite. They're going to push you a little bit harder now that you know the skill set and you have the scripts and you've been working on them and you know how to hold an open house. Actually, that's coming up tomorrow. So tomorrow's open houses. You know, you know how to work with buyers and sellers and really have a dialogue with your prospects. 
gold is really going to take that to the next level. So please consider it. It's at an all time low. I believe it's $79. And somebody could correct me on here if I'm wrong on that. $79. It used to be $800 to attend gold. It and just flipped on Friday, Bovi. I think at midnight on Friday, Texas time, it went to 99, which yep. is still a steal. It breaks down to $3.09 an hour. Yeah, I, I registered yesterday and paid 99. And, so. and you guys think that that you got your um, admission paid for for this class, right? I mean, how much was this class? I'm just curious. I forgot. Anybody remember how much we, we charged you for this? Jim, what was that? Oh, okay. I see a few of them. We didn't charge you for Ignite. Ignite is completely free. And I hope that you see the value in how much you gained in your business for knowledge and stuff throughout this course. So please consider taking bold because I promise you it will continue to ignite your business and you guys will be cappers before you know it. And you're going to be on your ALC. You're going to be in the leadership and the path to opportunity goes from there. So um, guys, happy Monday. Let's get our session started. We have Patty on this morning along with Lorna and then our other coaches, Tim, Aaron, and, and potentially other coaches here as well. So enjoy your day and I'll see you tomorrow. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. So are we ready to get started? We are ready. Patty, do you want to just introduce yourself a little bit? Tell sure. them about who you are. So I'm Patty Sutherland with the Sutherland Realty Group and at Keller Williams Realty Boston Northwest. And I have been in real estate for 30 plus years, um, but predominantly in the commercial world. So I'm a relative newbie in the residential world, about five years. What year is this? 2020. Um, I am on the ALC um, in our Concord office. And um, I enjoy um, the financial side of the business because I'm a numbers girl. Um, my dad would be proud. He was a math teacher. So um, I think that um, it, focusing on your business is impossible unless you focus on, your, on the financials. So there you go. We ready to get started? We are ready. Okay, I am going to share my screen which has the PowerPoint up. And once I do it, I will change it to the slideshow. So I'm hoping that I still get to see you guys because let's see, play from the start. You'll only see a few of us. Oh, good. Well, at least I see some people. To please put, I'll be monitoring the chat so you can put things in the chat as we go through. And also just to unmute, if you have a question for Patty, just unmute and ask it. But if you're not too shy to do that, put it in the chat and I will help you. Great. So we are going to be together until about 1030 this morning. It includes a couple of activities. So um, and please do unmute and talk with me um, because like all of us, I'm a people person. And although I love numbers, I love people as well. So um, please do feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, so I would just want to acknowledge that everyone has already um, completed their daily habits um, before attending class. Um, and I don't know if anyone wants to take a, a moment or two to just share what they're grateful for um, in terms of what they've learned um, in this journey. This is session eight. So you guys have had a fabulous number of sessions prior to this. What are some ahas that you guys have had? Okay, I'm gonna move on because it sounds like we have a quiet group. So let's jump in unless, Lorna, there's anything in the chat that? Nope, there's nothing in the chat, even though I know that we have some ahas and I see a few people that unmuted. So maybe we could ask our famous Linda B to give us some ahas. Um, I'm just, uh, I was thinking this morning how grateful I was just for this whole series of um, courses that we've been taking taking because it's just really um, kind of shifted my mindset from what I was doing to focusing on running my business and being totally immersed in real estate and having a good um, disciplinary practice as to what to do. So I really, really appreciate it and all of the um, speakers and participants and, and teachers. Thank you for sharing that. May I go? You can go. 
I'm really appreciative of having Ignite. This is um, the first time that I've gone through the entire Ignite together with the different teachers. Um, I, when I came to Keller Williams, I jumped in on a few here and there, you know, because I didn't really know what Ignite was. I thought it was just slide presentation, you know, that I found on Facebook that Aaron had put up. But it's it's really good because um, later you can go back and you can rewatch all of these or you can jump on the next one. And it's, it's just awesome that Keller Williams has a very systemized way of learning and educating yourself and getting the information that you need and to have all the different stories that everyone shares here is just amazing. And I'm just really appreciative of Tim and Aaron and their morning show and just how it gets you started on the right foot every day, thinking of business and how you're going to succeed. And the tools are there for you to have whatever you need to be able to be successful. And the support is there. And I'm just so proud and excited to be part of this Keller family. Wow. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, we all set? So one of the things that I would like you to um, just be aware of to start is knowing what your average sales price for your, um, your associates in your market area are, because we're going to do, we are going to do a little math. Um, I let, so there is one particular slide where the animation doesn't work, but I do have the numbers to fill it in. So, um, so let's get started with that first slide and my advance works. Yes. Okay. So the goal of our time together today is really to go through, um, you know, teaching you some habits to build a financially sound business. And so the successful agents do really two things, whether they know it or not, every single day. We grow our business, so we do those activities that help us generate leads and allow us to then have listing presentations and buyer consultations, both of which eventually lead to listings. And then we're also getting to know the market and really understanding what um, the real estate looks like in, in our particular market. And then secondly, we're running our business. So one through seven of these, I think just kind of happen automatically because as soon as you have a listing and you're showing buyer your houses, you're, you fall into this process of negotiating contracts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, um, and we're really good at attending training and getting coaching at Keller Williams is part of what I love about um, our company, but we don't always manage our money. <laughs> But we're going to talk about that today. So if you think back to the classes that you took in order to achieve your license to practice real estate, how many just by a show of hands, um, how many of you remember that there being a deep discussion about how to run your business with a, fi with a financial model in place? I'm going to ask everyone to throw it in the chat because we can only see five of you at a time. <laughs> I know. So, so five of you must wave at me. Um, well, and I would say that for the most part, the answer is no. There's no recollection of any discussion about um, sound financial practices, which is amazing to me um, because you can go out and do all these other activities, but if you're not making money doing it, um, then you're not able to live that big life that we're all focused on, right? So these are you know, some of the habits of the, um, of the top agents in terms of how to you know, ensure that you've got that strong financial basis. And our red book, which I always have by my side, so everyone's seen this, the um, red book, we have a number of different models that we follow, including a budget model and following our financial success. So um, this, and if you want to follow along in your participant guide, these um, habits are identified on page three. And so why, why is it that, um, that these are important habits. And if you read through the setting a profit goal, estimate and save for and pay your taxes, um, use the MERA chart of accounts, you know, being phys fiscally savvy, paying yourself a set salary every month, getting into the habit of doing that, 
And then really is we're, we're all doing this for a reason, Rye, um, preparing now for a financially secure future. So why is that important? I'll tell you just so you don't get yourself in trouble with taxes. I have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I vote for that as part of it. I have to tell you. Well, and I think that unless you really put these things into place, um, agents do have a habit of confusing income with profit. And we'll talk a little bit more about those definitions. As Lorna said, we don't always save for taxes or we think we're saving enough and we aren't. And we'll talk about what a good percentage is today um, to put aside for taxes. It might be a little bit more than you need, but what would you do with some extra cash, right? Um, they don't make um, use of literally the powerful tools available to them. Um, and so I will talk about the tool that I use to keep myself, um, what I'll say, financially honest. Um, and it also, because it's, it's a set process, um, I don't have to guess where I am at the end of the month. Um, some people just don't understand financials um, and they, they don't have to be difficult. Um, you can hire a bookkeeper to help you, for example. So they, it doesn't have to be a difficult process, but you don't really want to wing it when it comes right down to it. Um, some people don't plan for this, this standard monthly salary. Do you know what your household expenses are and how you're going to get there? Okay, and how are you going to contribute toward those? And then some are not planning. Some of us are not planning for a financially sound future. Um, I think my friends in the commercial real estate world said, why are you doing residential real estate? We just don't get that. And, I, and what my first response was, it's something I could do for the rest of my life. Now, I don't really intend to do this for the rest of my life, um, <laughs> but I think it is something that does not have an age barrier. And um, as I was getting older, um, I started, you know, started work when I was two, so I'm not that old. But, um, but as I get older, I'm thinking, you know, at some point I want to do things like I just purchased a summer cottage. That was really exciting for me. Um, so, you know, it's really planning now for that big life that you want to live in the future. Okay, so why don't we kind of go through some of these habits in detail? So I love this quote from Gary Keller because you know we always talk about what our big why is, and reality is that um, some of us, at least me, I can't always pinpoint what that big why is. But at the same time, I know that eventually I want to use this money to do some good, and so I do have a couple charities in mind that you know, as I save and when I have that little extra money at the end of the year because I've saved more than enough for taxes, then there's something that I can give to others. Okay. So, so what is the purpose of our business? So, you know, ultimately it's to make a profit. And so what I wanted to do with you, and this is a slide that initially had some animation, so you didn't see it all at once. Um, but somehow on my um, slides, the, the animation's gone. So you're seeing it. So it almost gives you the answer right away. However, what we're gonna do is review these two, um, these two scenarios. And again, if you're following along in your participant guide, I think this is page four, okay? So we start with, and if it, so we'll start on the far um, left, but you see this little house and it's been sold and the commission is $9,000. So can someone tell me, is that profit or is it income? Income. Thank you, Linda B. <laughs> You'll be the person that talks to me. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's income. Um, and what you'll notice is that, you know, the, it's the, what's called the gross profit that's left over to pay your business expenses, your taxes, and your household expenses are what it is that you're using to fund your personal lifestyle. So it's important to know the difference between income and profit and what you ought to be doing with it, at least at the start. Okay. So we talked, I just talked a little bit about, so what is it that you use the profit for? And again, it's the operating expenses of your business your taxes and your savings, um, your household expenses and um, life. You know, what are the things that you like to do? Um, I, in non-COVID times, like to go to country music concerts. I have to say that's my lifeblood. So I've been doing a lot of um, 
online listening to concerts and I have to tell you it's not the same <laughs> but that's you know that's part of the life that I like to fund um, I also wanted to have a summer cottage where I could gather my family and get a get away from, or feel like I'm getting away from a day to day. Um, so I bought a summer cottage 20 minutes from my home, but it's a nice little escape. And that was something that I was really focused on funding um, in terms of my lifestyle. So what I'd like you to do is just take a couple of minutes to read these different scenarios. And I'm going to go through them in a little bit of detail, but I do find that um, during this slide, there are a lot of questions. So um, please feel free to ask. Um, and I think Lauren's gonna watch who's unmuting and she's also watching the chat. But this is, it's important to kind of get this basic understanding of what it means to be financially sound and financially, um, and we're using a word here, unsound. So in the first scenario, you know, Jessica Campbell is our, our star agent here. And she sold this house and the commission to the market center is $9,000. Her check is $5,760. And so what a lot of agents do, especially when we're starting or especially when we haven't really identified some specific goals that we're saving for, um, or if we're thinking, oh yeah, we'll pay taxes at the end of the year. Um, many of us would put the money in the bank account and then just put it directly into our wallet and start spending. Cause it's, it's exciting to get that commission check. However, that can lead to trouble it, because we do have business expenses. We'll talk a little bit about those and how to minimize those expenses so you can maximize your profit. Um, but you know, the taxes, that's something if we wanna live in this wonderful country that we have here, we do need to support that with our taxes, okay? So that is financially unsound and, and I think they're, that scenario is fairly straightforward. A model for you to consider is to receive your check, your share of the um, Market Center Commission. And we'll talk about a little later how that changes as you hit the cap of your Market Center and how you hit the cap of your royalty. And I'll define those both later on. But initially you're getting 5,000 or Jessica's getting $5,760 of that $9,000 commission check. Now and what she's doing she, here, oh, and again, we'll talk about the month. What's that? Joyce has the question, it looks like. Oh, good. Hi, Patty. How are you? I'm doing well, Joyce. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I have a question. The taxes, are they based on the commission or, or on that $9,000 or is it based on the 5760 So it's based upon, it's a percentage of that 5760 Okay. Okay. And what we do is we, we talk about taking 40% of that. So I'm going to, you're, I mean, it sounds like you've read ahead, uh. <laughs> you, which is perfect. It's per, so we do, so here Jessica's taking a percentage of her, um, her commission check and putting it toward her business. And so we talk about 30% um, of that $5,760 ought to be put toward your, your business expenses. And that's based upon the millionaire real estate agent model. And that model is on page 157 of the book. If you, if you happen to have your red book with you, but there we have a specific model that we talk about and I'll get more specific about that um, as we move forward. But she's saying saving 40% of what she collects for taxes. Now, you'll want to talk to your CPA about, um, or your bookkeeper, um, but typically your CPA about, so what percentage should I hold back? And it's probably not going to be as high as 40%. But this is where you ask yourself, if I'm putting 40% aside and I'm not spending all of that on taxes, what might I do with that little extra cash or a lot of extra cash at the end of a year? So I like to be conservative and I like to, you know, put that 40% aside, okay, um, for taxes. But let me, I'm going to, or actually 30% for um, your, your business expenses and then 70% of that check to your personal bank account. Out of that, you're going to split the 40-60. So my, my apologies, I was getting ahead of myself. So again, Jessica gets $5,760. 
she puts 30% of that into her business bank account. And if you don't have a business bank account, it is helpful to have a separate account for your business. Um, it helps with tracking. Um, it also just helps keep things in order um, and helps you knowing what money to spend and what money not to spend. And then you're putting 70% in your personal bank account, but that's not going directly to your wallet. Out of that personal bank account, you're gonna put 40% away for taxes and 60% for um, your personal household expenses, okay? And I'm just making sure I've followed everything. But Joyce, did that answer your question? Um, yeah, so she's not paying taxes on the, the 9,000, she's paying on the 5,760. Great, yes. Okay. A little later on, we're gonna talk about the cost of sales. And okay. so that 9,000 is the commission check that is paid to Keller Williams. And then all of us are, you know, in different parts of our, um, on our way to capping. But if you've not capped, $5,760 is roughly 64% of that commission. We pay, all of us pay 30% um, initially to our market center up to a certain cap and our caps differ based upon the expenses of our market center. And then we all pay a 6% royalty to Keller Williams up to a cap of 3000. Okay. So that's where the roughly 64% comes from. Okay. So the, again, that sold commission figure, that is what's paid to the market center. And Patty, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. We had somebody who had a question about, um, he went to a bank to set up a business account and they said he needed a doing business as or DBA. Um, account. Did you have that experience at your bank? You know, I didn't. Um, I happened to um, bank with a credit union and they allow me to open up as many accounts under my name as I want. Um, so if I want to divvy up, you know, my money, um, you know, like for a Christmas account and that kind of stuff, um, they allow me to do that. Now, it just so happens that I did have a DBA. <laughs> so um, so I, I did set it up that way. And how do you get a DBA, Patty? So I, with, so in the state of Massachusetts, and every state is a little bit different, um, I happen to have chosen, I spoke with my real estate attorney, and I talked about how I envisioned my business, and we decided for me that an LLC made sense. So um, I established that LLC, and I chose a name, um, it, and my, my business name, not my day-to-day -day business name, is Mass Beaverbrook Properties. And so um, I chose that name and I do happen to have, I went to the state then and registered that. And there are forms that, you know, on, at mass.gov that kind of guided me through how to register my LLC and, um, and where I, and, and one of the questions was, do you have a DBA? So every state is different. Um, and so I'm cognizant of the fact that we don't have everyone from Massachusetts here. Um, but so two things, one is to you know, talk with an attorney um, to help you decide how you'd like to structure. So you could be a sole proprietorship, you could be an LLC, you could be um, an S Corp. So, so talk with you know, someone to kind of guide you as to what they recommend for you initially. And then each of the states, to my knowledge, because I have a broker's license in um, Florida, New York, and Massachusetts, they're all a little bit different when you're starting a business, but typically the state's um, website has directions and lots of forms to fill out. And I love, I love that you pointed out, talk to your accountant. I see Aaron putting that in the chat too. So we have a lot of different states, right? So in a lot of ways you could structure your business. So just making sure you talk with the professionals, just like we ask uh, sellers and buyers to talk with us as professionals. So talk with attorneys and talk with um, your accountant. And a DBA is doing business as. D as in doing, B as in business. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Hopefully that is, that answers everyone's questions. Uh, Vilmar raised his hand. 
Yes, uh, good morning. Um, I have a suggestion. I live in Rhode Island, and what I did is I opened two different accounts in my bank, and, um, and one I use it only for personal, and the other one for business. Sure. I do not have it um, like uh, Patty has it because I'm not big enough to do it. And for me, that's cheap the way I'm doing it. It's mm -hmm. just a suggestion. But follow what she's telling you too. You know, I just did it my way yeah. and I just giving my opinion. Perfect. Perfect. Now, I, th I think really what's key is just having two separate, separate accounts. accounts. And there's also the opportunity to have even more accounts and we can talk about that. So for example, I have a business account. I also have a business tax account or a tax account. And I also have an account that I put my profit in. So I'm, because I'm saving toward a goal. Um, so, and there's, I'll show you a book later. I'm gonna getting a little bit ahead of myself, but you know, having a separate bank account and even having a separate credit card. And you don't necessarily have to have that credit card in your business name initially. You can just take one of the credit cards you have and go, you know what, this is only for business and this one's only for personal. But the sooner you can get, even if you're just starting, the sooner you can get to separate things, the easier it will be to you know, really create that sound foundation. Okay. Thank you, track, right, Patty? I mean, I know many a year, I have things all over the place and I'm highlighting from each of the bank statements and each of the credit cards and you know keeping receipts. And so I love that streamlining it will make it more efficient. Right, right. And even if it's not a lot of money, most bank accounts don't require a huge sum. Some of them, are, like I know credit unions only require $25 to open up a new account. So, um, so separating early is, is helpful, keeps you from, taking a look at all those things that you must highlight um, to, to be able to keep things straight for taxes. Okay, so I'm gonna move on because I wanna be cognizant of the time and we've got lots of material to go through. But again, you can watch this again. You can go online and review the slides um, and you can always send questions my way. I, I love to talk about financials, so. And we're recording this, so it will be on the Facebook page as well. Ah. And the YouTube okay. page. So this is really just to summarize. So you have one transaction and, and doing this for each transaction really does set you up nicely for, for year end taxes. Um, so the, again, the $9,000 commission is what's paid to the market center. The share of this particular agent, so this is our agent, Jessica, um, her net payment after cost of sales, and we'll talk about that in a moment, is $5,760. And after we put money away for business expenses, we put money away for taxes, and we put some money away for that lifestyle that we're, that we're living, there's, or there's a certain amount available in our pocket. And the 2419 is what's available for our, our lifestyle. And if you do the math, that's 40% of your commission check. And so I would challenge you to think about another business that you can be in where you can net that much money to live the lifestyle that you're looking for. So, so that's another reason I tell my commercial real estate folks <laughs> and they just get their checks and, and have to do, I said, look, I'm in more control. Of what, um, of what I get to do with my life, okay? But the nice thing about putting this all together, your business expenses and your taxes in particular are accounted for, okay? So now we're gonna, we're gonna move toward, you know, kind of that was kind of, hey, this is really what we're focused on today, but I wanna focus a little bit of time on the millionaire real estate agent models. And again, the model for the um, financial, practices is um, on page 157, okay? And there's a whole discussion, a whole several pages talks about budgeting, okay? So this is that economic model, that 30%, that 30%, that 40% that we were talking about earlier. And so 100%, you'll hear people use the term gross commission income. And that is the income that comes to the market center as a result of your transaction, okay? Then there's, there's the cost of sales, 
and we'll talk about that um, in you know a little bit in more detail. But it basically is what you're paying to the market center um, for you know it's your share of the commission. It's um, any commissions or salaries paid to seller or buyer agents if you're on a team. Um, it also includes the royalties that um, 6% up to a cap of 3000 that we pay to Keller Williams Realty, which is really um, a great value, frankly. Um, and then any referral fees that you might pay. So we'll go through that in detail again. Um, you also have the operating expenses, <clears throat> excuse me, of your personal business. So what you pay your photographer, the cost of open houses, we're gonna talk about more of that, more of that tomorrow. Um, so your operating expenses. And then the remainder is, is your net income and profit, okay? And there is an example. So if there's, and we're gonna use this example of a $10,000 commission check. Um, some of us have the opportunity to have a commission check that's higher than that. And some of us who work in condos like I do, um, you do many more condos for commission checks that are a little bit lower, but you gotta do many more in order to, uh, to achieve the, um, that net income and profit that you're looking for. So the 30% is that cost of sales, another 30% for operating expenses, and then you end up with um, $4,000 as your um, profit or your net income. So um, again, page 157, I can't say it enough, millionaire real estate agent, um, reading the, the models will help kind of set things in motion here. Um, but that is, um, that's the specific breakdown that, um, that our lead agents, whoops, 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 what's going on? Our lead agents work. Okay. So the next thing we're kind of focused on is what the flow of money is and really a little bit more about the definition of, um, of profit and income. So this is an animated slide that works, so I like this. So the typical definition of um, profit is you bring in some income, your expenses go out, and then what's left over is profit, okay? Does anyone know another definition of profit, another way of looking at it? Bottom line. Yeah. Net taxable income. Net income, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to flip this over because I want to suggest another way of thinking about this. And again, if you want to, if you're following along in your participant guide, we're on page seven. And so these are the questions that I would challenge you to ask yourself to kind of turn this kind of traditional definition of profit on its head, but also to make it work. Um, for us, and this I think is a good time. A number of us took a course not too long ago um, based upon this book, Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. But this, this book for me was, it was a, the perfect example of how to really kind of refocus my mindset on where I'm headed and what my goals are. And so really the questions um, on page seven, again, of your participant guide, are important ones to, to consider. So how much money do you want? So let's start from what's left over, not what's left over. What's the start? Where, what's our goal? What is it that we want in that bank account at the end of the year? And then how many houses do I have to sell based upon my average sales price and my average commission check? How many homes do I need to sell to achieve those goals? And then how can I minimize, how can I make those expenses to maximize my net income? So once, and I find I'm very process oriented, I have an engineering background. So um, I said, okay, the sooner I can establish a process and understand what does it cost to take photographs? What is it that I do at an open house as a standard process in order to streamline my expenses? You know, what kind of gifts am I getting my clients? Well, maybe I might want to order a bunch of them. If I know I have this many transactions in a year, what if I bought my client gifts in advance in volume? Well, you know, what, how would that 
minimize my cost. And in fact, I do that. I buy a number of gifts at the very beginning of the year. And the company that I buy them for, I do Cutco. Um, the company I buy for gives me a discount for um, an ice cream scoop and a cake ser server that have my name on it. And so I get a pretty significant discount when I order a bunch of them. Okay. Um, and so, you know, are there any questions regarding um, the flow of money that you like to ask yourself? Or you would imagine you might ask yourself if you're turning this typical flow of money or definition of profit up on its, you know, up, flipping it over so that you think about the profit first. I love the profit first idea, Patty, because that's really, it makes the most sense when you look at it that way and be able to back it out, you know, to how many homes you have to sell. I mean, for years as um, part of the productivity coaching program, we're always asking that question first because it really does then back it into your activities and how many people do you need to talk to and how many, you know, appointments do you need to have? So I love that they flipped it around like that. Yeah, it's, it really helps to solidify what the goal is and how do you get and, and be able to, and then we're able to break it down into the components. And so then we know what we need to do every day. Not a lot of mystery here. Okay. So let's talk about these definitions in a little bit more detail. Um, so the income is actually the income from your real estate business. This is the income generated by an agent. Um, and I think that you know, we're a, listing income is pretty straightforward when you're the listing agent. The sales income is that when you're representing the buyer. Now, referral income, um, I have enjoyed this um, as an individual agent in the midst of the spring summer market. Um, my life gets a little crazy. I refer to it as when my hair is on fire. And that is when I, I am generating a number of buyer leads. However, I just don't have the bandwidth to really service them all well. I, I, I know that of myself. I hate to disappoint people. And so I refer a lot of buyers um, in the heat of the season and I get a referral fee. And so those referral fees range anywhere from say 15% to 35%. Um, but you know what, it's almost, it almost feels to me like free money. And what I know is that those buyers that I've met and I've connected with are getting taken care of. So um, a really, that's one of the um, components of the income that we earn as agents that not all people tap into. Um, so just keep that in mind for the future. And then of course there's leasing income when you assist um, tenants in finding um, finding a home to rent or vice versa, you're representing the landlord. Is there any question about um, the definition of income? Um, hi, Patty. This is Bernita. Hi, Bernita. Hi. I have a question about leasing income. Mm -hmm. um, so if we are representing the tenant, um, do we always get the commission or how does that work? Like, so I can tell you how it works in my market, um, it, and, it, and it varies. So um, my experience is that closer into the city in, in Boston, that um, the landlords actually do not pay the brokerage fee. Um, they ask for the brokerage fee from the tenant. And then as you get further out into the suburbs, it flips around um, that the landlords do pay the brokerage fee. Um, and in my market, the brokerage fee is typically one equivalent to one month's rent. Um, so does the brokerage fee for both, like for the listing agent and the tenant agent, both? Or so we I'm going to jump in here, Patty, as, a, as the PC here. Um, yeah. So it is different in every market. And because this is a commission conversation, we can't really talk about numbers and amounts because okay. every we're different brokerages. So that's against antitrust. So what I would say is that check in with your market center, uh, your, your TL or your PC to find out what, what you guys do as a market center and what your market center policy is. Um, but as in what's offered in MLS, you could go through your local MLS and see um, under rentals, you can look and say like, oh, 
that brokerage is offering me a half a month. Oh, that brokerage is offering me $500. That brokerage is offering me, so you can get, start to see what's happening in your market, but then as much, far as what your office charges, you want to check with your broker. Sorry to cut you off, Patty. No, 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 I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank Did you. That someone answer your question? I'm sorry, no, it can't be very specific. No, it was just because I happen to have a, a customer and who is not willing to pay for me as a tenant um, agent. And there are many properties in MLS that I check and they does not offer the uh, brokerage for the tenant agent. So, yeah, so I don't know in what situation, that situation, what do I need, what, what can I do? So you need to check with your market center to what your office policy is on that. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And then I think at some point it becomes a personal decision. Do you, do you accept the assignment? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's hard to disappoint a friend and someone, you know, but at the same time, um, there's value to your work. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Laura. Sorry to, no, sorry. We can't be more specific in that instance. Thank, no, thank you for that. Because here's another one of those slides that um, could get specific where we, we can't get specific. Um, so cost of sales. So the cost of sales is really the cost of doing business with your market center. And so I will say that there are a number of people um, that know that I've got 30 plus years of um, real estate experience, predominantly commercial real estate experience um, in the last 12 years in New York City. Um, so they know that about me and they will say, why don't you have your own brokerage? <laughs> and I go, are you kidding me? Um, Cause they don't understand what it is that you get when you align yourself with someone like Keller Williams. And so the, the 30% um, that I contribute that I share or that you know, with Keller Williams is really, I view it as, the cost of being aligned with and benefiting from all the different tools, training, um, camaraderie, everything that we get from Keller Williams. And so- Can I, it, can I interrupt again? And just to, just to clarify, when you're talking about 30%, that's from the MREA model. Yes. 30% is your cost of sale. Okay. Sorry, just wanted to make sure we clarify. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so the cost of sales is made up of several different components. So it's the commissions paid to the office. So it's the share. So again, we saw that $9,000 commission check in our very first example. And there was a portion that Jessica paid to the office and she had the remainder in her commission check. And those are the fees that are paid to our broker, our, our market center, and it's referred to, the term is used as company dollar, okay? So when you hear about, you know, people talking about company dollar, that is the, that's the amount of that commission that's paid to the brokerage that the brokerage retains, okay? We also pay royalty fees to Keller Williams, um, so to our, co our corporate entity. Um, we also, depending upon how we are structured, if we're an indif independent agent or we're on a team, we may also pay commissions or splits, I like to use the word share, um, pay to other employees um, or independent contractors that are involved in the sales. And then we also may, there may be referrals that we receive. So every once in a while, I'll receive a referral from someone in another state um, to help their client who's, they've just sold their house in California, for example, and now they want to buy a house in my market area. So I will pay a referral fee to that agent who referred that to me. Okay. Do you have any questions? So there are some details that are associated with, you know, many questions that may be arising about all of this. This is another good um, thing to talk about with your market center in terms of what are the fees? What is the company dollar in your market center? Um, what types of referral fees? What is the range of referral fees that are common um, in your marketplace? Okay, so we're gonna actually go through an example.
And so about kind of really the calculation of your, um, of your commission. And so this is the one I'm just going to check. Yeah. This is the one that there was some animation here where the slide was going to fill in the blanks, but I will ask you, and this is on page, I think page nine, I'm just going to double check. It should be right about page nine in your participant guide, but I'm going to give you the answers, <laughs> but in order to illustrate a point. Um, and this really has to do with capping. And so initially as an agent, all of us contribute a certain amount of company dollar um, and royalty. And so what at that point is your net commission check? And I'm gonna use a really round figure because easy math is easy for me. Um, so say the commission check is $10,000. And so I don't know, can you guys see my cursor? Yes. Oh, good. So this box here, this is the gross commission income. So it's the $10,000 check in this example that the market center receives for the work that you've done. Okay. So then you're multiplying that by 30% and that for your company dollar and that 30% is $3,000. So right here is 3,000. Oops, now my curse is going away. There it is. Okay. Then we're also paying that 6% of GCI of the gross commission income as a royalty. And that's here. Okay, so you're subtracting the $600 here. So you've got 10,000 less 3,000 paid to your market center, less 600 to Keller Williams for a resulting net commission or gross profit. Um, of $6,400, okay? So that's when, when you first start. Now, more often that we cap, I think almost always, we cap on our royalty first. Um, and I think the royalty for, um, for all of us is the same, Lorna, isn't yeah, it? It okay. is, yep. Yeah. yeah, so, that, so, it's, a, so it's that 6% capped at 3,000 mm -hmm. total. So you would have, and there's my cursor, you would have your 10,000 again as the, gross commission income, you're subtracting the royalty of 600, and then your net commission is 9,400. And so this is when you've capped on your ro royalty. Actually, is there something going on with this? Um, I'm thinking that this should be... Yeah, if you're capped on your royalty, it should just be company dollars. So that actually... Right, right. so the slide is... Um, I think slide is wrong. Is wrong. Yeah. So we, we should have a gross commission income that instead of saying royalty here, it should say company dollar. Correct. Okay. So it's 10,000 minus 3,000, so your net is 7,000. And what's interesting, all the times I've taught this, I've never noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everything, you go through it enough times, you see, find each, something new each time. Exactly, exactly. So in this case, when you've capped on the royalty, but not yet capped on your company dollar, instead of royalty, this should actually say company dollar here. So it's your GCI times 30%. So you've got 10,000 less your 3,000 and your net here is 7,000. So what you've seen is what, as you cap, your share of the commission is higher. And then when you've capped on both company dollar and the royalty, that full $10,000 check is yours. Woohoo! That's my favorite. <laughs> I know, that's my favorite part. Um, and, so, and I have to admit that um, August 1st is my um, anniversary date. And I work like a dog <laughs> to, to get to identify how many homes I have to sell and get those homes sold because um, having capped is a wonderful thing. Um, and it allows you to, again, fund your business expenses, fund your taxes and savings, and then fund your lifestyle. So that's pretty darn nice. Okay. So any ahas from, from this exercise or this illustration? Patty, I know we have only a short time, but um, up top, where did you get the $600 from? It is the, so I'm using here $10,000 as the commission that comes into the market center. Right. And so the 600 is the royalty. 
It's what we pay to Keller Williams um, corporately um, for all the things that they do for us. So again, it's a huge value. So it's GCI, so it's that 10,000 times 6% is 600. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, could you go over number two one more time? Of course, yes. So where it says royalty GCI times 6%, it should say company dollar GCI times 30%. So this is when you've capped on the royalty. So the cap for all of us on that royalty is $3,000. So once you've contributed $3,000 to Keller Williams Realty, you're all set. So this should say, again, company dollar GCI times 30%. So you've got $10,000. It's that same $10,000 commission check paid to the market center, less $3,000 which is your GCI, your 10,000 times um, 30%. And then the result, the result in net commission check to you is 7,000. Um, so second question. So how much is cap on the royalty and how much is cap on company dollar? So that's going to be different per market center. So company dollar is different in every market center. Just like real estate is different price points in each of our market centers. So um, that is, Check in with your market center if you don't know your company dollar. And then for everybody in Keller Williams, it's the same. It's that 6% is capped. The royalty is capped at $3,000. Is this every year? Is this one time cap or every year? So it goes every year on your anniversary. So if you joined in September, October 1st is your anniversary. So it would reset every year. Thank you. Sure. Does anybody else have any questions about that type of thing before Patty moves on? I just also wanted to point out, Tim Lindsay put, posted in there that 100% that I was woohooing about. He said, don't forget, you still have to pay taxes on that. So <laughs> Not if you invest it. <laughs> yes, touch um, CPA. <laughs> question. Right. Yeah, we, we don't know what people want to do with their free time. So unless you like running from the feds, you might want to <laughs> talk some away for the government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say that I had a, it, and running from the feds is, is a difficult thing. Um, one of my friends learned, um, not in, um, not an agent, but in another self-employed business, learned that um, if you don't pay taxes, like if you don't put a return, he, he was under the false impression that if you don't make any money, that you don't need to fill out a tax return. And um, so I think 15 years later, um, a letter was received in the mail saying, you owe, you owe taxes for you know, these years long ago. And um, I remember you showed me the letter and I said, I said, well, how did you know that? You know, he goes, I didn't owe taxes. I'm like, well, how did you know? And he goes, I didn't make any, I didn't make any money that year. And I said, well, how did you know <laughs> that you didn't make any money? How'd you live? And um, he said, well, you know, I did this, I did this, I did this. But by the time at the end of the year, my expenses, I had no money left. So I didn't make any money. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> um, so, so lesson learned that no matter what you think, um, thankfully he had a big box of receipts and he was able to bring it to a CPA and they figured something out and he paid lots of penalties. Um, but I will tell you that person has filed a tax return every year since. So, um, and that was you know, this whole G seven year time frame, you're safe. Um, you're not safe if you don't file a tax return. So um, that was one of those, I knew always to file a tax return, but it's, uh, that was one of those scary stories for me. So um, thank God my father was a math teacher, but anyway, so let's see how to plot your course for a big future. Okay. Does that sound like fun? This is where financials comes in. So, um, there is an activity that um, we're going to do to achieve your profit goal, and we're going to be working backward, 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 yeah, backward from profit to determine your activities. And so for this, you're going to need a calculator um, or your calculator app on your, um, on your phone, and we are on page 10 of your participant guide. Okay. And this is my page where I have lots of notes. 
Okay. And this is also a page that gets lots of questions. So this is one that has animation, but what I'd like you to think about, um, and again, um, following along on page 10, you know, what, it, what is your net profit goal? And this is, what is your goal after the money you put away for taxes? Okay. And I'm gonna go through an example but I wanted everyone to cut on page 10 of your participant guide, put the numbers that are true for you, okay? So in this example, again, I'm gonna start with some easy numbers. Um, I want you to start by write down your um, annual net profit goal on the top. And so in this one, we, um, I'm gonna start with $100,000 because it's just a round figure. Okay, and again, this is the number that's in your bank account after you've put some money away for taxes. Okay. And the next step then is to calculate what your gross profit goal is as opposed to your net. So net means net of taxes, but so how much money do you need to make certain that you are paying for your taxes. So you've got, if we have, and I'm gonna go with that 40% number. If 40% is what you wanna put away for taxes, then what you wanna do is to divide this number by 60%. Okay, so 100,000 divided by 60% is 166,666. Okay, everyone understand how I got there? This is kind of backwards math. <laughs> yes. kind of, so start, starting from that, that profit goal, that money that you want in the bank. Okay, so you're gonna divide that by 60% and that will, that's the money that you'll need to have available to you. So you can put that 40% in the bank for taxes. Okay, so then you want to take that number and calculate what the gross commission income is. And you're dividing that by 40%. And does anyone know why we are calculating, here's your GCI, calculating that by dividing gross profit by 40%? Hint, page 157 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. <laughs> So that goes back to, as we took a look at the slide, and you can go back at your, le at your leisure, um, that 40% is that gross profit target, okay? So this is where it's helpful if you know what your average commission is. And so we're just using an average number of um, $7,500, okay? So you're taking that gross commission income so that is that income that comes to the market center and dividing it by your personal average commission income. And so in this case, we're using an average of $7,500, okay? And so we're, we've come up with 56 homes that need to be sold by you and your team. 56 is a lot to do individually, but it, it can be done. Okay, a question. So that 41666, you did divide it by the 7.5? Is that what you did? Yeah. 7,500. Okay. Yeah. Yes, $7,500 as an average commission figure. And if you do this from the top, if you're using the, if you're checking the math using your calculator and just using this example, you really do have to start from the top because there is some rounding that occurs. Um, last time we talked about this, um, someone did it individual numbers, you know, said, okay, I'll take that for, and divided it out and multiplied it out. And, um, and the numbers came out slightly different. The key to it is to take these numbers from the top and, and just start from the beginning and, and divide by 60%, um, then dividing by 40%, and then dividing by um, 7,500, okay? Now, the anticipated cost of sale, this is based upon an average. 
an average um, royalty of 3,000. And I think in this example, it also has an average um, company dollar cap of 20,000. Again, that number is going to differ from market center to market center. A lot of it has to depend upon the um, expenses of the market center. And just a plug um, to be in your financial committee in your office, one way to get really clear on what all these numbers mean is to participate in um, in your market center. And that I, I actually participate that on a, on a regular basis and it really cleared a lot of things. I understood all of this math, but it really was, so what is this company dollar thing? Well, now I totally understand it. Okay, but that's, um, and you don't have to go to every single financial committee meeting, but just going to a couple, you, it'll drive some clarity to this company dollar figure. But in this example, the budget should be just based upon the MREA model, what your budget should be for your expenses. Okay. Any questions? This is, pro this is probably the slide I get the most questions from. So if you're kind of wondering about it, um, so does everyone else. I have a quick question. On the um, 7.5K, no, I'm sorry, before that one, um, actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think I'm having a hard time with that 7 7.5k commission is that the like typically if you have a home sold for a hundred thousand let's just say it's ten percent commission five goes to the the one brokerage and five percent is paid to another if it's split 50 50 so that 7.5 is that the total or is that the amount that's your split your that's your office split that's, okay. so that's a really high number. Well, like, it depends on your market. That's not a percentage. Huh? No. no, it depends on your market, Hope. Okay. Um, so every market, right. you know, our average gross commission in Concord and Lexington is $15,000. So it does depend on your market. What market are you in, Hope? Um, Upper New Hampshire. I don't, I don't know. Okay. What. So your average price point might be a little bit less. It's based on the price point, right? So do you know what the average house sells oh. for up in your area, Hope? Um, probably 325. Okay, and so ours is 600 average. So again, it really just depends on your price point so that they just gave us an example of, let's come up with a number just to use for an example. And that's why they said 7,500. So okay, I, I'm saying that 100,000 is the sale of the house and this is 7.5 percent commission on that hundred thousand i'm sorry it was my confusion I'll yeah no it's not a, a percent it's actually the amount of the check that makes sense now hope yes i was thinking it was a hundred thousand dollar house and you were getting 7.5 percent commission oh uh, okay it's just, it's just me and my brain it's not working it's okay no right to make sure you're clear it's a lot of numbers being thrown around yeah now, th this is the slide I get the most questions or people are, are most quiet about when I ask them questions. Because <laughs> sometimes we don't know where to start. But I think that if you take a look at um, the chapter on the budget model um, in the Red Book, then, um, and you read through that, and you go through the previous slides here and understand what that, you know, the whole model about, you know, GC if GCI is 100%, your cost of sale is 30%, your operating expenses is 30% and your gross profit is 40%. Some of these numbers begin to make more sense. But this is um, my experience in teaching this is that this is not a slide that you get like right away, okay? okay we do have a question. Someone says they don't understand the 40%. So if maybe you could explain that, um, what that 40% is, Patty. Yes, so, and maybe we'll go back to the slide. It lets me. Oh, it's gonna. Might take me a little bit. It's coming. <laughs> there. 
So there, so this is the MERA model for what our budget, you know, if, as we're thinking about our budget, what, what should it look like? And so you've got the gross commission income, which is 100%. And then the other three, you know, are, are totaled 100%. So you've got the cost of sales, which is what we pay to the market center to Keller Williams. So that's 30, roughly 30% of that 100% gross commission check paid to the brokerage, paid to the market center. Your operating expenses should be roughly 30%. And what we're, we're targeting is a 40% net income to our bank account that pays our business expenses, our taxes, and our, and our lifestyle. Does that make more sense, Van? I don't know if you want to unmute. I hope that makes more sense. Okay. The other thing I did see in the chat, he says yes. Um, the other thing is somebody said the operating expenses seemed high when we were at that uh, example. And, you know, this is based on the millionaire real estate agent where you have additional business expenses that you may not have as a single new agent. So sometimes we might see, I'm not saying all the time, that your expenses when you first start as a new agent can either be super high depending on your income or the percentage could be lower depending on how many houses you sell. Yeah. So that operating expense can vary. That's the parameters that they recommend you stay in when you're budgeting. Yeah. Does that can, make sense, everyone? Can you give some examples of uh, operating expenses, please? Yes. Actually, what I was going to refer to, um, so this is, the Bible for our business, I have to tell you. It, um, if you knew nothing about real estate and you read this book, you're like, oh, I can run that business. And in the back of the book, there is a sample um, profit and loss statement that gives you a sense for what the income categories are, but also the expenses. So for example, you're very likely going to um, pay someone to assist you with your accounting and your tax prep. And there's a cost to that. There's a cost to your advertising. So depending upon if you, so for me, I, uh, with every listing, I send out, I'm old fashioned, I send out postcards. <laughs> and so the direct mail expense is an operating expense. Um, I also do things like, um, you know, non-specific to my listings. I also do things like I have a little um, advertisement at my local CVS. You know, and so I have one of those kiosks that gives out the little wipes. Um, and so I've got an advertisement there. So that's a cost of advertising. Um, you have telephone expenses. You, have, you might have salaried expenses. So it's the expenses that are specific to you, specific wow. to your business. Okay. So if you're selling 56 houses, 120, roughly 125 grand is, you know, it's not, you know, it, it's not a lot of money. You're bringing in a gross commission figure of 416000 Okay. Does that okay. help? Thank you. You're welcome. But again, I think that I love, <laughs> I love this book because it just provides the processes, the models. And if you follow it, um, you know, some people will say to me, so how did you ramp up so quickly in your residential real estate career? And I said, I read this book and I just did what it told me to do. And, and really, I think it's as straightforward as that. I resisted some things, Lorna knows, but I'm, I'm, I adopted them pretty quickly once I knew that what I was doing wasn't working. Okay. Okay, we've got about 20 minutes remaining, so I want to make sure that we cover everything. Um, but if you have questions about this. I just want to point out, Patty, that this portion is done in 20 minutes. We are all staying together till noontime, so nobody gets to leave. Everyone has to stay with me. <laughs> Trips and lead generation, just as a reminder. Yes, yes, I'm, I am letting you drink from the financial fire hose for another 20 minutes. So hang in there with me and then hang in, then the scripts and that kind of stuff, yes. Thank you, Lerner, for that reminder. So I'm going to talk a little bit about best practices. So, okay, the numbers, we've, done, we've, we've looked, taken a look at those. You know where your resources are to be able to help you make more sense of that. And I will tell you, even I, a math girl, 
when I first looked at this and took Ignite, I went, okay, I got to do that on my own and calculate it by myself. So if you're feeling that way, it's totally normal. So here are some really um, good best practices. And I'm going to go through each one in some detail um, because setting your financial foundation and your financial practices, it, the sooner you do that, I have, this will all make far more sense, I think. And I'm obviously very biased. So I think that it's really important to gain some clarity on your, your big life hopes and dreams. So what I knew when I moved back to this area and I became really busy in the summer, I needed a place to escape to. And it needed to, and my sister has a great summer cottage up in Maine, but I can't be driving three hours up and three hours back in the middle of the summer. So, um, so I found myself a summer cottage that's 20 minutes from my home. And I have to tell you, I was just there for dinner last night and um, it was really very nice. But that was one of my big hopes and dreams is to be able to save enough money so that I could purchase a summer cottage. So that um, it really does help. It's helped me gain some clarity on where I'm moving forward. So you wanna set your personal and your business budgets. And so we talked about a model for your business budget um, and the MARA um, book has, if you're questioning, you know, what are those expenses? What should I anticipate? Um, it's all right there. So, and then really better understanding what your personal budget is. Um, I know for years I resisted putting together a personal budget um, because I just always had enough money to pay stuff, so I didn't worry too much about it. But I found that the more I focused on my business budget and I focused on my personal budget, I was better able to achieve my financial goals. Okay, you would like to set up a business entity, and and that's talking to you know people talk to us as their real estate professional. There are other professionals that help us build our business and set up our business. So I spoke with my attorney and that's who assisted me in identifying whether it made sense for me and the, the business that I was creating, whether it was sole proprietorship, LLC, um, S Corp. Okay. So talking about that with a professional is very helpful and setting it up. It's not necessary. I think as one of our participants said, you know, um, I haven't set up that business entity, but I did separate my bank account for my business versus my personal. And I think it's also helpful, um, which I've started, and that was when this book came in. So I'm going to say the same thing 10 times, so hopefully it sinks in. But this book, Profit First, when I started to um, separate bank, a bank account for profit and for taxes, then I have to tell you between, and I'll talk a little bit about the software I use to track my expenses and to develop my annual profit and loss. Once I did that, and once I had that separate bank account, taxes are a breeze. So I promise you, setting up this foundation makes life actually a lot easier. Okay. You want to download and use the chart of accounts. Um, because frankly, I remember reading and going, why wouldn't I? You know, if someone's already created the process and the model for me, then let me use that so that I can be creative in other areas. Okay. So where can, excuse me, where can we find um, MREA chart of accounts? So this is the millionaire real estate agent. So MREA is, is the acronym for a millionaire real estate agent. And in the back of this book on Hopefully, it, Patty, Linda B just put the spreadsheet in the chat box. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Linda B. That was very helpful. So you can find it in the back of the book, but you can also find it um, on online and in the chat. So thank you, Linda B. Perfect. Okay. Now you want Excuse to- Excuse me, pa Patty. Yes. We can find this online where? Just on web, on internet or any particular location? Lorna, where, I remember finding it way back. I believe it's in KW Connect. If you put in KW Connect search bar, but again, um, Linda said she, Linda just posted it here. Somebody said it's in protected view. So let me see, open file. Um, we'll put it, you know what we'll do? We'll make sure that it gets into the Facebook page. Great. Yeah, you just have to, when you open up Excel, say unprotect. Okay. So you can edit it yourself. Awesome. So you can yeah. download it from the chat or we'll put it in the Facebook group. Yeah. And I just went to Keller Inc. 
and it was there free to download. Awesome. Color ink. Um, here. Yep. That's where a lot of uh, Gary Keller's books are on kellerinc.com. Now, what I did is um, I did have a bookkeeper already. Um, and so what I did is I downloaded it and I sent it to her. <laughs> and I said, use this. And I will tell you that not all bookkeepers um, are versed in real estate um, accounting. Um, so if you don't have a bookkeeper already, um, it's worth interviewing a few and ask them how, how many other real estate agents or real estate related companies do you do business with? Um, because our chart of accounts is a little bit different. Um, I actually sent the chart of accounts both to my bookkeeper and to my CPA. Okay. And then what I did it, when I discovered, um, and this is, so this is the, the next one is purchase or download um, tax accounting software. So I know that um, some agents in our office use QuickBooks, which I understand works very nicely um, and related to the um, our MARA chart of accounts. I actually use RE Profit and RE Profit, it's R-E-P-R-O-P-H-E-T. And um, it was created by um, a Keller Williams um, agent and it is, um, we actually often will have this particular agent in particular, um, I think he's an operating partner, um, come in and teach us, you know, why it makes sense to use something like this. But what I, what I signed up for that, and it was less expensive for me to have, to use RE Profit than to talk with my bookkeeper um, every month. And in fact, I pay a little extra even though I understand the numbers, I don't want to spend my time in the numbers. I like to spend my time out with my clients. Um, I actually pay a little bit extra so that I speak to um, a representative with RE Profit once a week. And sometimes it's 15 minutes, but more often than not, it's five minutes because we've got ourselves all set up. My business bank account is connected to RE Profit and my business, um, my business credit card is connected and we've categorized everything. And at the beginning, it was a little bit of time to set it up, but I have to tell you, it's been a breeze ever since. So I'm a huge RE Profit um, fan. Patty, if, if I could jump in real quick, uh, Matty Erdman, who is uh, the gentleman you speak of, mm -hmm. uh, he is going to be delivering a wealth building series that actually starts on the 7th uh, there's a link for the sign up. I will throw it in the chat. It's a phenomenal opportunity for people to learn more about their financials. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Yes. That, I have to tell you, I can't say enough about um, that overall program and how easy it has made tracking my expenses. I mean, I can go in at any time and know where I am and taxes at the end of the year are super easy. Okay. So hiring an accountant, a CPA, and an attorney, um, you don't have to have them um, on retainer for a full year. You could just, for example, an attorney, um, you know, call them on an hourly basis. Um, but I think, you know, thinking about the fact that we are real estate professionals and others hire us to assist them with their real estate decisions, we in turn, you know, ought to use professionals to help us with things that aren't our day-to-day -day business as well. Um, set dates to calculate and pay your taxes. Um, so I pay quarterly taxes and I have to tell you, once I started doing that, I will, I will never look back. Um, I pay April 15, July 15, October 15, January 15. You just know when to do that and you put the money aside, correct? Um, to be able to pay those taxes. And so life is a lot easier when you're not focusing on that stuff, you're focused on your day-to-day -day business. Okay, what else is here? Oh, and then preparing for your future. So, you know, having insurance, savings, and investments. And um, thank you, Tim, for mentioning Matt's course um, as it relates to investments. Um, so, you know, and even if you're not ready for investments, learning about them and setting those goals toward those investments um, provides a lot of clarity. And it helps you with your clients. Yes. Right? That's right. 
That's right. Well, and that's a great point because if we're investing, then we can share what we learned with our clients. I always will tell people who are buying that first condo um, that might be under 200 grand, but it's a lot of money for them at the time. We always look at that same time at, well, what's the value of that condo today and how do they rent going forward? So I will say to my first time home buyers um, in that price range, I'll say, hey, think of this. You could simply just move up and rent this. And so that could be the start of your rental portfolio. So very good point, Lorna. As we learn more about investment, we can share that with our clients um, and invest and help them invest in real estate. Any questions on best practices? Great. So next we're kind of moving on into these um, you know, in talking about a little bit about our ahas from this, any questions? And then I think we're moving into um, the daily success habits. Perfect. So if you want to stop sharing your screen for a second. Let's see. I hit escape. Stop sharing. Here we go. So. First of all, so that was the major material. So what questions do you have for Patty? We have her for a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. what, what made sense? What doesn't? What are your ahas through this? Now I want you to unmute. I need to sit down and get organized with spreadsheets. <laughs> I thought I had my budget down pat, but now I need to add a few layers to it. <laughs> That's a great aha. Mm -hmm. um, Patty, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're working on a team, do you still set up a DBA? Good That's a really good question. Um, I'm, not, I'm just starting to grow my team. So I am the DBA because they are on my team. Um, I would imagine you could still do an LLC. I mean, it really is about how you're managing your money. I think it's a good question for an attorney. Okay. So I know that this is probably not, I know it, for me, not being a numbers girl, that um, it can be a little overwhelming with a lot of these numbers. I mean, for me now, it's, I've been doing this for a while, um, but yet I know that it's a lot to think about. But the main purpose in Keller Williams talking about this in Ignite is for you to really think about your business like a business, mm -hmm. right? You're making a business plan. Any other business, if you're going to go open a retail shop somewhere, you would want to um, have a budget. The bank would make you have a budget in order to get a loan to start your business. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Right? So really understanding your, um, you know, your financials or your financials is really just an important part of being a business owner, which each and every one of you are. Did you all know that when you got your real estate license? One's looking at me like I'm crazy, Patty. <laughs> yeah, not at all. <laughs> no, they don't tell you that in real estate school, do they? By the way, you're opening a business. They don't say that. Um, let's see. Verify average market center commission income. I'm not sure what you meant by that, Renita. Do you want to let me know what you meant? That's what you learned? That's that's in the um, anticipated cost of sale calculation on planning for your future. You need to know your average, your market center's average commission income. It's listed here as 7.5K. Yep. But what, I mean, every market center is different. So I need to verify what it is for my market center so that when I put the calculation together, I'm actually coming up with something that's doable. Yep, that makes or, sense creates a profit somewhere along the line. <laughs> yeah, profit is good. That's what we talked about, right? All right, let's see, I have in here, Patty, be aware that LLCs and S-Corps are not allowed in mass unless you are a broker. CPAs do not know licensor law. Speak to your broker before you do that. That was advice from Donna. Um, yes, the separate accounts seem like a cleanest way to keep it all separate, and separate accounts are great advice. So that was a lot of the ahas in the chat. Yeah. One of the things I would add about, you know, this is a great precursor to our business planning course. And you will need to know what your 
average um, commission has been or what you hope to anticipate. You know, if you're, if you're targeting a specific price range, for example. Um, and there are several reports on mykw.com um, that you can take a look at. So familiarizing yourself with those reports um, is helpful. We had a huddle on Friday, um, which was perfect for me because you could, I said, look, take a look at these reports in anticipation of this you know, financial ignite class and then in anticipation of the business planning class. Um, and what I would say about business planning is do it. Um, even if you don't feel like you have a big business just yet, the, the sooner you begin to plan, um, the easier it becomes in really envisioning um, your goals and that big life. Um, and then um, in anticipation of that class, you know, take a week in advance to do the homework. Um, I've made the mistake of like doing it the night before because I thought oh, it would be quick and easy. And um, I would tell you I was baffled during the first half of the class. So my lesson learned was make sure I start the homework a week in advance and review those reports and understand my numbers um, before going to business planning. Okay. Um, doesn't, uh, well, our Market Center and Conquer put out a, a book that shows each town and the um, year over year sales, average increase in price. And so you can get an idea of what the average price that the homes sell for. Yeah. Yep, we have market stats. Um, Lorna, he's um, referring to what Michelle puts together, the, the monthly booklet of, of market stats. Oh, okay. Okay. I was like, um, yeah, so the market stats, I'm thinking, what is that? So yes, we do do that. So, but everyone can look in their MLS. Just going to say. And you from can the actually look at what your average market, um, you know, the sales are for this year and compared to last year and five years ago. Um, but just knowing what your average um, sale price is in your office, if you're brand new, use the office numbers. Yeah. And if you're not brand new, look at your market, your um, market trends report, multi-year trend reports is yeah. what it's called. Does anybody have any uh, more questions of Patty? All right, so we are going to let Patty get to her walkthrough or home inspection. I know you have something going on. Um, thank you so much, Patty, for going through all of that. Thanks, Patty. My thank pleasure. you, Patty. Thank you, everyone. That was awesome. Patty. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Patty. Bye. Do not, do not leave me. I'll be very sad if I start seeing everyone leave me. We're not done yet. We still have more time. So, but I do think you all need a break. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah, careful. Oh. Suddenly, suddenly everybody has a walkthrough to go to. You just set up everybody to leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've got my home inspection. I got to go. So that is, so it is 1029. So at 1040, go get a snack, go get some water, go stretch your body. And I will look forward to seeing everyone back here. And we're going to talk a little bit more and we're going to do some practicing together and lead gen. Thank cool. you. Stop getting, stop leaving. You can just go on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick question. If there's anyone on here that is actually using QuickBooks and that uh, MREA chart, is there any way to um, 
set up your categories in QuickBooks to do all of those categories easily? I hope. Um, I'm not sure if there's an, uh, if you can upload a Excel spreadsheet into QuickBooks or not, um, but that's what I'd look for uh, to see if it offers that. Thank you, Bill. Hi, Lana. Hi, Anna. Can I, can I ask you a question really quick? Of course. On the uh, royalty and uh, company cap, she gave us $3,000. I'm from um, Keller Williams, Boston Metro. With 3000 is that from my uh, market center as well? So there's two things. One is the company dollar. The right. market center has a different company dollar. Um, oh. And then, so you want to check with your market center to find out what that amount is. Okay. And then all of us at Keller Williams Realty International pay 6% of our gross commission income with a cap of $3,000. With a cap of $3,000. So the royalty and the company dollar are two different things. And I have to find out what the company dollar is. I'm, I think I'm getting kind of um, confused. Wait a minute. 
I have to find out what I'll, my market center company dollar is, correct? Correct. Yep. So just ask Chris. Chris Brown's your team leader, right? Right. So just ask him. Or it sometimes is laid out in your independent contractor agreement. Sometimes you'll see it in there. Okay. So look at those two things, but that it should be um, readily available. You could probably even ask your MCA. Okay, but the cap is 3000 okay. The royalty. the royalty. Oh, the royalty, the royalty, okay. Company dollar cap is different market center to market center. Okay. Well, I have the that help? Yeah. yeah, it did, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Haley. So quiet on the break. <laughs> I can't take it, Linda. <laughs> I think it's uh, fervent prayer taking place for a, uh, a bountiful uh, lead generation session, right? I love that, Tim. Yeah, they're doing deep knee bends. They're stretching out, getting ready. <laughs> I do have a question that didn't have to do with today's, but I was talking to one of my old co-workers who started his own home inspection business. Mm -hmm. And I know you can't, like recommend someone personally for like that person, but could I put him on my list of home inspections? Yeah, that you can have three people and recommend three different people. Absolutely. Okay. Good question. Rule of three uh, for all that kind of stuff. And at least in my, in my world, I always recommend three of each. Yeah, I think in New Hampshire, I don't know what state you're in, Haley, but in New Hampshire, I think we're required to recommend three lenders, but for everyone else, you can have a go-to. Um, so I think it depends. Um, uh, so you want you definitely want to check with your market center and your um, and your state rules around that stuff, like in guidelines. Yeah, um, I'm in Massachusetts. I just know that like, the conflict of interest type of thing. So I. So so there's always the disclosure piece. I, you know, if you disclose, he's a friend of mine, and I'm, I've, he's done work for me before. So I think that's the other piece of, um, really, in our business is about um, disclosure, right? So just being, as long as people know, like, oh, my realtor recommended him, he's a friend of hers, um, then you're probably covered, right? So it's about um, just being honest, okay. right? <laughs> That's it. So there's not a conflict. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as you disclose, like she said, um, you know, and again, I see someone saying only buyers can recommend. Um, I'm not sure what that means necessarily, but it might be a state requirement there. But at least for us, Haley, since you're in our market center, um, you know, you do, you can recommend home inspectors. What I find is that I like to recommend three of everything just to give people choices, yeah. but I also know personalities. So a lot mm -hmm. of times with attorneys, I'll put the personality that matches best at the top of the list. They always call the first person. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> so you give three, they're still going to call the first person on the list. They might call. Yeah, I was just going to put them on a list I have. I just didn't know. So if that's fine, then. Yeah, it's fine to do that. Okay. All right, so it is 1040. Woohoo! So that was 
A good morning. I love learning about financials and I have to be honest, 27 years ago, nobody talked to me about any of that. And so I did not start my real estate career off correctly in that area or that aspect. I did a lot of other things right, but not the financials. I got the whole check. I was like, whoa, I can spend this all. And off I went. And especially at the beginning where I was so excited to get a paycheck <laughs> that it was um, challenging. And so Keller Williams has given me the gift of being more financially sound. So really take this to heart. Take this class in particular over again. Take business planning. All of it will start to fit together. Does that all make sense? This is my second time doing the business planning one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you need it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of numbers, especially if you're not a numbers person. That's not your natural <laughs> go-to, and it is not mine. So, Even if you're a numbers person, I mean, I'm a math teacher, and I'm doing numbers all the time, but when you're talking about business and the different infinite variables, I call it, you know, there's so many different businesses, so many different people, what they're doing, it's hard to zero in on everything and you know there's a big difference between a bookkeeper a cpa a lawyer and a lawyer who knows real estate and a cpa that knows real estate and other things as well so when you the more complicated it gets the more you really need to lean on people that know so with the keller williams um red book the bible um you know i, I really I mean, I think you know all this was in the red book. I'm not that far in my reading, but I just find that it's fascinating that he has thought of everything to have a successful business. And again, I'm going to cry because I've been searching for answers, and here they are in the red book. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it awesome? I it is love awesome. This company, and I love that they help us with these tools. And you know what else I love that they give us? Each other. Scripts. <laughs> Do you ever wonder what to say? You don't have to wonder anymore, right, my friends? So I know I always see people start dropping off, but this part of our job, this script practice, is something we should be doing every day to get better every single day. Just like exercise, just like anything that you do, you have to practice it. Um, so we are going to break out into different rooms. I'm going to do my best. This is only my second time breaking everyone out. So you guys, if you get, you're alone, I'll try to make sure nobody's alone. Um, but if you don't have your face showing, at least make sure you're talking while you're practicing the scripts. So I was thinking that this would be a great script to remind them you're in real estate or if you're brand new, new to real estate right just practicing that ford script so this is in your ignite book on page four or on page six so that's the script i want you to focus on today so if you have your ignite script book take that out and go easy on each other the first time around but as you practice again i want you to give each other a few challenges And Lindsay, do you have something to say? I saw your face just appear. All right, so who's ready? All right, first of all, everyone stand up. You gotta stand up again, ready? I'm gonna do this. Stand up, I can see you, stand up. All right, what are we gonna say? They're home and they wanna talk to me, right? So one, two, unmute, I wanna hear everybody. Everyone unmute, everyone stand up. Where is it? One, two, three. Uh, they're home and they want to talk to me. They're home and they want to talk to me. They want to talk to me. We're going to do it again a little more organized this time. Ready? One, two, three. They're, they're home, home and, and they, they want to talk to me. me. All right. I love it. <laughs> Let the energy up, my friends. We can't be like, hello. We need to be outside. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so. Now we're going to break out into breakout rooms. Now that I got <laughs> oh. any questions, <laughs> let's see. I got it. still trying to find the. We're doing here. script practice and then calls. Or are you going to bring it? Script practice 
We're going to come back and we're going to okay. pause together. <laughs> okay. That's what I just was double checking. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, All right. I posted the script books in the chat. The chat should follow you into your breakout rooms. Thank if you, you need it. All right, it looks like everybody has a room. So I'm gonna open it up. We'll see you when you get back. Did everybody get asked to join a script of room? Yep. Okay. Make sure you join a room.
Everybody who just joined, we are in script practice right now. You should have been assigned a room. If you're not assigned a room, let me know and I'm happy to give you a room.
Sorry, I said two minutes, but then when I hit close all rooms, it went to 10 seconds. So here yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, we, we thought you shut me off right when I was gonna do something good. I know, Jim, you were like closing it all yeah. up. And, and there, just, yeah, Jim was waving his gavel. It was getting to the good part. Just, yeah, he was, dismiss he me. was on fire. Just dismiss me. <laughs> I'll put you all back if you want. But <laughs> oh, that's quite all right. <laughs> so how'd it go, everybody? I jumped into a few of you, so it was fun to listen. Tell me what how it went. Went good. Good practice. Did you have any objections that were challenging for you that you weren't sure how to answer? No, we were we were all behaved. <laughs> <laughs> behaved. I I think the biggest one we got was that, you know, um, that we talked a little bit about was um the oh well my friend my friend said he wants to sell his house, but um, I don't, I don't want to give you his information. And um, so, you know, being prepared with a script around that as agents, you know, so, um, okay, I totally understand. Um, why don't you share my information? Why don't you get in touch, get permission from him to have me call him and I'll follow up with you tomorrow or I'll call you back on Thursday or when we meet on Thursday to go for coffee, um, you can let me know that it's okay and you can share me his share his information with me so I can call him and, and get the ball rolling with that. Um, you're going to get that objection. That's one you're going to get, right? Like that when you ask for the referral, do you have any friends or family or people from church or work or whatever? They're going to say, I do know somebody, but I don't want to give you their number. <laughs> so um, <laughs> um, that's, it's one you're going to get a lot. So figure out the scripts that you're comfortable and, and give it a timeline. I'll call, I'll follow you up with you tomorrow or you know, we're going to meet on Thursday for coffee because we haven't talked in so long, right? And um, at that point, you can hope, will you have a chance to talk to him, whatever it is, so. Awesome. Anyone else? Everyone behave today. Well, I hope as we lead generate together that everyone that you call behaves as well. So I want to hear from all of you before we start making calls. Do you have any fear around making calls today? Oh, I like the shaking um, of the heads. <laughs> yeah, can I add something? Uh, yeah, about uh, the follow-up that, uh, for example, if people don't want to share their uh, information uh, with the, their friends and they said, uh, I will uh, forward your information to them. And Aaron put the uh, nice point that after that, you have to follow up with them, uh, ask, uh, so, when are you going to meet with this uh, with your friend? Maybe tomorrow. Uh, so, may I call you back uh, tomorrow at noon and uh, see if they uh, have my information? Yeah, so that's a good point. That you, if they just said, uh, "Oh, all right, I'll uh, pass it some time. I don't know, like when I see him," and it also go, uh, uh, yeah, went out. So yeah, it's better to follow up every time. The follow-up is the key, right? I believe that we talked about that in uh, last week. I think Deb and I heard a couple people last week mention that. So making sure that you do follow up. So how do you make sure you follow up? Note card, email, text. <laughs> Reminder to you. Send up in your second. Yep, a, a plan, right? On smart plans, mm -hmm. on your calendar, mm -hmm. right? I love that. All right, so how's everyone doing before we go again on your daily 10-4? Who remembers what the daily 10-4 is? <laughs> Linda. 10 calls, 10 note cards, 10 new contacts to um, command, and uh, 10 um, uh, showings a week or previews of property a week. I love that. That is exactly it. How's that going for everybody? Good? Well, I see a little bit. <laughs> right right now I have about a 10-2. A I got to start working on the other two a little bit more. <laughs> it's a journey, right? And every yeah. day we're going to work on it. So that's why we do this lead generation together. Because we know 
that every day, a little bit more. And doesn't it feel good when you see everybody else doing the same activity? And especially on a Monday, we're going to get a jump start on your week. Who wants to reach out, talk to their sphere of influence, get some names, get some appointments, and get into production quickly? Oh, I know. Production quickly is definitely there. <clears throat> Everyone yeah. should be raising both hands. Yeah. That's, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right, Linda. I love it. So we're going to spend the next... 25 minutes, so it's 11.15, together, muted. I want to see everybody with their phones, with their headphones, and I want to see you making some calls, right? Just, just like we just practiced. You're just checking in with people, making sure they're doing okay, right? We're at that six-point mark in this uh, crazy pandemic, and lots of people need, need a care call from you. So give them some love, check in on them, share what you're doing, share your awesome app. And I would love, as you are talking to people, take a second in between calls. I reached somebody, I talked to somebody, I have an appointment. Let's fill that chat box with our successes. How's that sound? All right, dokey. everyone on mute and say, woohoo! Ready? One, two, three, on mute. I want to hear lots of eyes. Woo! Oh, yay. Yay. <clears throat> All right. Let's get this done, my friends. I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to make some calls. I can't wait to see that chat box blowing up. Stay with me and let's get some calls made. Lorna, can, can I ask you one question? Yes, Giancarlo. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so with the, the uh, showing procedure or, or just viewing properties and open houses with COVID mm -hmm. uh, Massachusetts, um, are, do we, are we required to have a doctor's note for we're just agents or is it just for buyers? You don't have to have a doctor's note for anybody unless you've been out of the state or in one of the red zones, you should be able to go and look at property as well as your buyers. So you don't need anything unless you've been out of the area. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good luck with your calls. Thank you. <laughs>
Five more minutes, everybody. Five more minutes.
Luna, is today the last Ignite? Ooh, hold on. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I thought I was muted. Um, it is not, so we have two more days. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I thought someone said today was the last day and I was like, I didn't think so. I thought we were going through Wednesday. So I just wanted to make sure, okay. No, no you're right. All right, great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, everybody, one more minute. Finish up those calls. How many people did you reach? Zero, one. I reached one. Reached one, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bill said two. Yeah. I uh, reached Michael three. Two, uh, three. Awesome. How were the phone calls? Pretty good. It um touching base with people we haven't talked to in a while. The conversations really take a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, they do take a little bit of time, and, <laughs> they and, do. and especially right now, I think in the world, we all just need to slow down a little, and take that time exactly. to talk, to connect with people. I mean, this is a relationship building business. Did anybody share yes, their app? <laughs> have two on on doc for the app i will follow up after this awesome i love it i love that app and where are they going to go now that you talk to them to my app, <laughs> Your app but also where else into command right absolutely adding them as contacts because how else do you know when the last time is you talk to them they're in, they're in command as contacts. That was part of what I was doing on the call is just updating the response. I love that. So adding a note and adding any information you didn't have for them. That's the way to do it. What else? I have a question. Sure, Molly. I um, just made 25 phone calls and only one person answered, um, but he was, he, he was like, you know, he just caught me at home. I'm working. I don't have time to talk, but can I take down your info? So I gave him my name and number. He asked my number. Do I send him a card now? In the Okay. So it wasn't somebody you knew. Is it like circle prospecting? Yep. Yep. So I don't know him. And he said he's not looking to buy or sell, doesn't know of anyone. Can I take down your number? I'm like, sure. So now I send him a card and then he has my business card if he thinks of anyone, right? I send him a note card just saying, so nice. Thank you so much for picking up. I, you know, yeah. sorry to interrupt you at work. Here's okay. my card. So if you do know of anybody or you have any real estate questions, please keep me in mind. Okay. Now, do I also put him in my command? I would. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Aaron and Tim, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so Jen Bobby actually was just um, reminding me and asking me to remind everyone that there's a script off today uh, at one o'clock um, and she posted the link on the Facebook group. I can see if I can grab it before. So if you are planning to go to that, um, that's today at one o'clock. So you can go eat your sandwich and then or make <laughs> some more calls and then run over. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That'll be really great. And I see that Lauren had some uh, follow-up calls at a meeting. That's awesome. This is great. You guys were awesome today. Wasn't Patty great? She was awesome. Yeah. It was just um, got you right through the numbers. One Very of the good. one of the guys I talked to needs uh, recommendations for mortgage brokers. Okay. So since you are on a team, I would ask your team who is they recommend. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. All right, guys. So tomorrow you get me again. Aren't you so lucky? <laughs> Two days in a row. And we have Jen Giro from our office. She's one of our top agents. She built her business, as did I, on open house and follow up. So it's one of our favorite topics to do together. And if you can believe it, she has more energy than I do. I know it's hard to believe, but she does. <laughs> So it, be ready. You might want to have some coffee yourself and be prepared for tomorrow.
be prepared to ask questions, learn about open houses, find out what a great tool they are. And I'm very excited. Two days left, my friends. And I hope that you are doing the activities. What I know, Erin and Tim, about these 37 people on this call, or 34 minusing us, is that these people are the people doing the activities, staying engaged, and you guys are gonna soar. So keep up the good well, work. That's a great point that you make, Lorna. You know what? When when people get into real estate and they're thinking, well, there's so many other real estate agents, you could argue there's 6,000 agents at KW within the New England region. And there's 37 that stayed on this class. So that being said, there's talent and tenacity and you have to have both. So if you're going to continue to build your efficiencies and your scripts and you feel like you're, Aaron and I say this all the time to our agents, as you coach, I'm not here to tell you to stop banging your head against the wall. I'm just going to make sure you're banging your head against the right wall. Cause it's going to right. feel like that. Right. And it's going to be, it's, it's gradually then suddenly. And if you keep chipping away and you keep knowing that I'm going to show up, I'm going to keep talking to my people. I'm going to keep making them feel value and valued. Uh, this industry will come to you. Uh, don't press, don't push, just call your people, love on them, stay in those care calls, wear your mask and uh, wash your hands. And that's what it boils down to, because we can't sell homes to people if we're in the hospital. So stay healthy, for God's sakes. And on that note, I will say happy Monday to everybody. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thanks, Tim and Aaron, for all your help. And uh, we'll see you all bright and early in the morning, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.